two. Part two, baby. <laughs> First step, which we talked about for 40 minutes last time, was the process to create a list of individuals we have harmed. Yes. This next step involves becoming willing to make amends to those we have harmed. Two different things. Making a list. My list is just a list. <laughs> You're not on the amends yet. <laughs> this seems like this is tough. Yeah. This is heavy duty stuff, bro. And it's important for us to understand um, the analogy I lose, used last time is like a ripped piece of clothing. I take it to a tailor and they mend it. They put it back together. That's very different than I'm sorry. Oh, I'm mm. sorry. I got to tell someone I'm sorry. You know what? Your whole fucking life has been sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I yeah. was a sorry individual. This is not about saying sorry. This is about changing, amending my behavior. Well, a sorry is how cheap when you're next. Yeah, I mean, it means nothing. I said a thousand, sorry, yeah. I said a thousand yeah. times sorry, just baby. to get the heat off my sorry, neck. Sorry, baby. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to get them off me, man, so I could keep drinking. Yeah, it's so crazy because it's like you, you have those people – that you talk to and they're so forgiving and understanding and loving and they are heard a hundred sorries and they're still willing to have kind of have a conversation with you. But it's like the, the attitude, the behavior, it's not changed. Nothing's different. They know yes. deep down inside or, or their higher self, that spiritual part of them knows that they're going to get hurt again. Mm -hmm. So there has to be something where that recognizes and, and maybe your higher self talking to their higher self, you know, they see through, through this and be like, Oh, he's serious or she's serious now. When, when we have this commitment mm. to the healing process by making amends, what does it look like for, like with you specifically when you show outwardly this demonstration of your commitment to personal growth, you know, or a desire to repair something, yeah. like you, to mend yeah. something in a relationship? You know what? A commitment is something that I do whether I want to or not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I made a commitment to get up and make my bed. I made a commitment to practice asking God for help. I made a commitment to yes. change my selfish behavior so that I no longer harm my family, so I no longer harm my employer, so I no longer am a destructive member of society. So a commitment looks like me doing something no matter what. Mm. That's, again, what we discussed in the last episode the integration of the shadow. It's controlled aggression. It's the monster part of me that makes that possible. Because the monster will say, there's nothing you can do to me that will make me change my mind. Right. I'm not returning to alcohol. I'm playing for higher stakes now. So we're integrating the shadow again here. Um, I was famous for ruining Christmas. <laughs> I ruined four consecutive Christmases. People did not know. My family did not know if I was alive or dead. I was off drinking and they didn't know if I was coming to open presents Christmas morning. They didn't know if Dwayne was going to survive the night. They were terrified. They were worried. Four years in a row, I ruined Christmas. They took my presents back to Macy's. <laughs> I never even got them the, and, and I, I didn't deserve them. They, they, I was famous for ruining Christmas. Yeah, that's so wild because when, when whenever you think about that, it's like there's this whole idea of because I'm not taking any responsibility for who I'm as a person. Not only am I hurting things, not only am I damaging things. And when you damage something, like you said, you can mend it back together, but it's not that original fabric. No. So I damaged my relationships with my family, entered recovery program, mutual support groups, and through this amend process. I sat in front of all of them. I sat in front of my, my, my parents, my brothers. I sat in front of my cousins, my grandparents, my uncles. And I went through this healing process. It took as equally as long. Four, four Christmases, yeah. For it to start to heal. It took four consecutive Christmases of changed behavior mm -hmm. for my family to start not watching me. Let's start kind of feeling them a to little relaxed. Start, yes, the exactly. Hurt was so big. Exactly. For them to start yeah. uh, uh, backing off and saying, okay, he's, he, maybe he's sincere. Maybe he's really changed. Because you, you, like, you don't see the hurt. Not if I'm turning a blind eye. So 
you don't know the nights, how many nights your mom cried or sleepless. You, yeah, the sleepless nights. Like, uh, the, and that's what that's what people they they think it's about seeking forgiveness, and this is our absolution. But it's about like you had talked about taking action to right mm, our wrongs, very good, and create a more positive future for that relationship. Absolutely, that's totally different. Then, like you said, saying I'm sorry. Yeah. People need to, you You have to grasp this concept because you can't, you'll just come in saying I'm sorry again. I'm sorry. There's a, there, there's, it's about taking action to right the wrongs. Yeah. Plural yeah. wrongs. There's a lot of them. <laughs> and ones you don't realize, that's why you asked the question. Yes. Yes. Corrective, um, corrective behavior. I have to start behaving differently. That's the amendment. That's my commitment. I ha- I'm making a commitment never live that type of life again where I'm selfish and I, and I run you over to get what I want. And that's the hard part. It's easy to say, Hey, sorry, baby. Mm -hmm. It's, it's it's hard to say, Hey, watch me. The future is totally different. It's hard to change the behavior, Mm. but you know what? Dying drunk is hard too. Yeah, (laughs) Dying from an overdose. That's hard too. causing uh, uh, your family that much pain and destruction. That's hard too. So we say, Pick your fucking hard. Do you want to live a hard life where you die from your addiction? Or do you want to live a hard life where you're expanding, growing, and of service to God and others? And and and, and people need to understand this. It's like you just got done watching The Matrix. Yeah. All three yeah, of them, right? No, no. Well, we're in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the middle. But the whole idea is that it's a game. Yeah. Games aren't fun unless they're hard. I I can remember like playing video games when I was younger. It's like if the game was too easy, it would be kind of boring. Boring. You're done. You want to have to do those levels over and over again. And and it's hard. Like video games are hard Mm -hmm. and there's no way around that. Life is hard. It's a video game. It's, it's why would God not put us in a scenario of matrix for us to learn and evolve? That's what we're here for. That's what earth is put here. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a training ground. Yes. And yes. what is it? Any type of training that's meaningful is hard. The Marine Corps is the hardest thing I've ever done, right? Mm. Marine Corps boot camp, super tough. School of infantry, super tough. I will always remember it. Like, mm-hmm. and it also helps me because it's like, that was physically really hard. I can do anything. You, if you got through that, you can, yeah, I can do, I can anything. do anything. Yeah. That's, that's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It prepares you for life. So, but now, but I got to the next level. I know, oh, I can handle this much suffering and pain. Physically, I can, I can mentally, I can, I've done this much. I've been there. And I think this is where a lot of not just addicts, but like these young, these young people nowadays, they haven't had it very hard at all. And and Joe Rogan said a really good thing. Whether you like him or not, it doesn't matter. But Joe Rogan, he did say this and it was really wise is the worst thing that's ever happened to somebody is the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Sure. So if, if the worst thing that's ever happened to you is your parents got onto and they took your phone away for a day. And that's literally the worst thing that's ever happened to you because you've lived such a sheltered life. You're not going to be able to handle hardships. And then when you become an addict, you're so narcissistic already from this comfortable lifestyle that you live. You need to seek out hard things to do. It's only going to help you in your addiction. You need to seek out hard things to do that are different from that addiction. Like you said, hard things are good. Absolutely. It's not bad. You have to reprogram your mind. Yeah, I love it. I to love understand it. that, yeah, I don't want to do cardio every day. It fucking sucks, but I have to. Mm-hmm. It, I don't want to eat clean. I'm gonna right when we get done with this. I'm gonna go have. I've got. I made a bunch of chicken breast. Yep. So I'm gonna go have a chicken breast. I don't want to just eat that. <laughs> I, I want to have like one of those ice pops. You know, like uh, ice cream. Uh. Pizza, Costco pizza, I would love please. to go in the freezer right now and pull out like an ice cream fudge thing or whatever. <laughs> It'd be delicious and then order a pizza from Domino's. Yeah, but dying of diabetes is yes. hard too. It's it's really hard. Well, yeah, when I'm spending, se- like my dad, seven, eight, nine, ten years, super sick in the hospital all the time. Yeah. And then dies early. Like, pick, who wants that? Pick your heart. Pick your heart. We talk about this all the time, bro, mm-hmm. you and I. Um, Sisyphus, pushing the rock up the hill. That's a load. That's something to carry. Right. That's something difficult. Mm-hmm. It's our job as individuals with a recovery practice, individuals with an expansion practice, to see Sisyphus as happy. He wants to do that. He wants to push yes, the yes. rock up the hill. At least he has something to do. Yes. If you take the sled away from the sled dog, it will literally chew its own leg off just so it has something to do. 
Human beings are like that. Human beings are built for a burden. We just have to figure out the burden that works for us. It's not too overwhelming and gives me some meaning and purpose. Uh, if, uh, if side I, note, side note really quick. That, if, you, if you, This drives me nuts. If you have a fucking husky or one of those work dogs, th- their, their DNA is to work. So they're going to go fucking crazy sitting in your house all the time. Oh, yeah. So don't have that dog or go work it. Like, it has to work. Take it to the park. Run Yeah, the, you run. have to run. I, I hate that shit. I had a German Shepherd mix, Malamos. So those are, like, the wow. worst. Like, I mean, full Belgian Malamos is the worst, worst. Like, you're fucked if you own one those of those. monsters. Well, you just have to, like, they're police <laughs> dogs. You have to. But this thing needed twice a day. Like, it had to, or it, or it was not a happy dog. It was yeah. mean. And a lot of situations in life are not about relaxing, mm-hmm. chilling, being comfortable, going on vacations. Like, if you ask a lot of people's to-do list or things that they want to do in life or things they want to accomplish or words, it's like retiring, not having a job, being able to, I want to, I was asking this kid the other day and they're like, I just want to travel 24-7. And I'm like, you would hate your life. No, I wouldn't. I would absolutely. I was like, if you had unlimited in the bank and all you can do is travel 24-7, I was like, do you know how many people that their parents had money? Billions of dollars are multimillionaires, and these kids grew up traveling, living, being able to go to Chanel or Hermes or wherever, these mm-hmm. Louis Vuitton and buying all the shit that they want. And the, there's a higher suicide rate mm. than there than there is with poor people. Yeah. Why yeah. is why are these rich kids that's got absolutely everything they want, they can travel 24-7? That's what I was telling this kid. Why are those people committing suicide? Interesting. They don't have a purpose. And no meaning. There's no meaning in life. I, I didn't have to work for anything, never earned anything. There's yes. no meaning. It's responsibility and truth that gives me meaning and purpose. Don't you think God gave you the addiction for a purpose? Interesting. No, no alchemy. <laughs> yes, go alchemy right there. <laughs> that's, that's your purpose. That's big level sobriety, bro. That is big level spirituality. Let's jump off the deep end. Well, Why well, I mean, were you an addict in the first place? Because God gave it to you. So you have a challenge. <laughs> the lesson. You have something to show up to, to present the best part of you forward. That's called, My addiction is calling the best part of me forward. Because the best part of me is the only thing that's going to be able to handle that addiction. Well, for me, it's cool because it's like, well, a thousand mute suits before I couldn't handle it. Correct. Now the universe has said, oh, you can handle this. Let's, this is their, let's throw an addiction at you. This is tough. This is the toughest thing you faced, but you've evolved to the point mm. where it's time to hit this. You're ready. So like you, 14 years. Yeah. The miracle of healing. Yeah. It's, it's like I, I fucking nailed this. Do yeah. my there's so much magic that takes place in order to be mm-hmm. able to to understand that, bro. I got sober with a with a with someone in Taos, powerful uh uh female that that I was I was grateful to be get sober with. And um we also had an uh, there was an uh, an older gentleman in the mutual recovery group um <clears throat> that was a little uh uh like kind of like spiritual sandpaper. Nobody really liked him. And he, he was a, uh, he was, he was abrupt and he kind of spoke in jokes and he would say vulgar things. And, um, it was very easy to judge him. It was very easy for people to get mad at him. And, um, uh, uh, uh he used to say stuff like, that's crazy. That's like a pregnant woman pole vaulting. <laughs> right, yeah. and, and he used to say, oh, that's worse than a hemorrhoid. You got that? It's worse than a hemorrhoid. And, uh, just vulgar stuff would come out of his mouth. Anyways, this girl that I got sober with, she hated him. She absolutely resented him, deplored him. She told me one time, when he speaks, I have a mental image of my head of jumping up on the table, ripping his head off of his body with his spine still attached, and then beating his lifeless body with his own head. That's what she <laughs> told me. That's how much she hated this person. Well, that's a mirror. It's yes, a mirror, yes. Yeah. He was showing her parts of herself. Anyways, she was going through this process, this amendment process. And she got to a portion in the amends where she had to make an amends to her grandmother. She had harmed her grandmother. Uh, but her grandmother had passed away. And she wasn't around anymore. So her spiritual advisor said, well, why don't you go to a retirement home? And why don't you volunteer your time one hour a week, helping the elderly until you feel like you've made an amends for the harm you caused your grandma. An amendment means my behavior is changing. So she did a counterintuitive behavior and went 
to the elder the, to an elderly you know retirement home and 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 was of service to these people. Anyway, she was there. She'd been going for like three months, and um, she said she was uh, with this elderly woman, and she was feeding her because she could no longer feed herself. She had Alzheimer's, and she was so far progressed in her Alzheimer's that uh, she didn't remember how to feed herself. And she was basically spooning this gruel into her mouth, and some of it fell off of the spoon and landed on the elderly woman's hand. And my friend took a napkin and, and cleaned her hand. And the elderly woman grabbed her hand and just held it. And in that moment, their eyes locked. And she said that in that moment, she felt forgiven uh, for what she for had grandma, done yeah. to her grandma. And um, come to find out, this woman that she was feeding, well, that was the wife of the man that she wanted to pull his head off and beat him with it. Uh, uh, and he would come every day to talk to his wife that didn't remember him anymore. Ah, that's amazing. And her hatred towards him was replaced with compassion and understanding, and she didn't want to hurt him anymore. She knew that he was a good man in his heart. And this is that magic yes, that can take yeah, yeah, place yes. in this process, bro. How the fuck would she know that? How would she ever well, only, know? Only the universe would put those puzzle pieces together like that. Yes, so this is the alchemy. This is the transmutation. This is the taking the worst part of me into the light, and God's got a great plan for it. Yeah, that's so awesome. Even more than what you can see. Yeah, I would never. Because she was just going to do this to make amends for grandma. She, she could have never imagined that it would also heal that's so amazing, bro. That was eating her up. That, that's incredible. And and that's where the men's, like you said, righting our wrongs and creating a more positive future the is a deeply spiritual practice. Mm. And this is what we're talking about right now. It requires humility, compassion, and an open heart. And I, and I want to talk about this open heart thing because we always think of, of addicts as being closed off. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, because the addiction causes you that. The only emotion or feelings you have is when you're drinking. And, you know, then that's way off because it's just the hurt talking, mm -hmm. opening up. Mm -hmm. So for an addict to open their heart, it seems so vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And, and like in this story here, that there's a vulnerability there. You know, it's like, I'm going to go volunteer for old people. Yeah. Like, my grandma's already dead. You know, so sorry. I can go to her grave. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll write a letter and burn it and then, you know, whatever. But but to do this action like that, to make amends, that is, it's like meditating or everything else. It's a spiritual practice. Absolutely, yeah. It's changed behavior. It's changed behavior. But it changed her heart. She opened her yes. heart and look what happened. It's a miracle, man. I'm not capable of creating that type of change inside of myself. Mm -hmm. Recovery, it's constantly asking me to do paradoxical shit, like that's, that's, that's not a normal thought that I would come up with. Like, it's very counterintuitive. But the amends, and, uh, but the amends open your brother's heart. And yes. You need yes, to hear the next one yes. for the, the, I mean, the last episode for the story. But that allowed your brother to open his heart again, and then he helped you in yes. a time of need. And then we... With we, your daughter and everything else. Yeah, we, we created this powerful relationship where, you know, he's my best friend. Yeah. And... um When we're going through this amends process and we're, we're talking about opening the heart and approaching others, if I can do that, if I can open my heart and if I can approach someone else in a vulnerable way, paradoxically, vulnerability is the way of strength. Mm. I'm coming to them more powerful than I've ever come to them yes. before in, in a more genuine way than I've ever come before. Now, if I can approach someone at that vibration, of that vibration of love, that vibration of healing, and that vibration of forgiveness, if that's my motive when I enter this conversation, 10 times out of 10, it goes well. Well, it's also, and our literature talks about this, it's also a ripple effect yes. into the world. Oh, my God. So that high vibration of love is a ripple effect, just as the negative vibration with the hurt was a ripple effect. So now you're coming in, and that's the healing process, that's the alchemy. You're coming in and you're replacing that low vibration 
with the high vibration and that high vibration, that heart centered consciousness. Yeah. That's the only thing that, and we were talking about this the other day, heart centered consciousness is the only thing that heals the world. Like that is the only thing, truth, honesty in the heart. And that's love. That that's the greatest power in the world. There's no greater power than love. Yes. And, and love heals it, it not being Republican or Democrat, Mm-mm. not uh, being uh, I'm from France or I'm from Belgium. It, none of those things matter. Uh, what matters is having love towards yourself and towards others. Like th- th- that's the greatest commandment that's to love so, thy neighbor as thyself. So powerful, bro. So, and and Jesus summed it all up right there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause and those are the two things that that's the immense process. Mm-hmm. That's the immense process. I go, I, I come to someone else at the vibration of love and forgiveness and vulnerability and then this magical thing takes place where, you know, we talked in the previous episode about in my addiction, I'm the destructive tornado ripping through the lives mm-hmm. of the people closest to me. Well, to transmute it and approach those same people with this new vibration, I might be the catalyst for the change in my entire family. They're no longer terrified. They're no longer in fight or flight around me. Mm-hmm. So my normal environment, the people I frequent most who are usually destroyed or, 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 or affected by my addiction, they get a new lease on life too. They don't have to be in fight or flight. They don't have to be in cortisol. They don't have to be worried all the time. Me practicing this new vibration gives them the opportunity to bring their best self forward. Mm. They're not protecting themselves anymore around me. That's the amendment. That's the healing that's available for us in this process. It changes me and it changes them. And, and, and this is the cool part, like with your story of your friend um, that recovered with you. It, because of the interconnectedness of, of all, like, you know, I mean, I believe in, you know, that we're all one. We not only heal those that we're working with, we're not only healed the relationship, we're not only healed, but we heal ourselves. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah, the crazy yeah. part. Absolutely. It almost seems selfish, but that's the way it goes. It, like, it, it heals you too. It's so beautiful, bro. I was told at the beginning of this process, you know, we, uh, uh, we make a list, and I was told, don't you fucking put yourself on that list. And I was like, why? I, I, I really owe myself... I hurt myself a lot, and it was the wisdom. I'm so grateful that I was plugged into the wisdom and the guidance I received. They said, no, 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 you don't understand. Making the amends, healing these relationships, that's the amends you make to yourself. Because people don't realize this. You can run to a tunnel and hide in it, you know, or a cave, whatever, or a monastery, but the real work is being around others and serving them. Yeah. Like we talk about this all the time. It's like we're in relationship with people, Mm -hmm. whether it's my work, whether it's my girlfriend, whatever it is. The real work is me practicing it out in front of her. Yes. It's, it's, it's me being loving and speaking to her higher self, not looking at her ego or how I'm judging her because she's doing something I perceive to be wrong (laughs) in my limited understanding and knowledge. You see what I'm saying? So, so the work is the healing is the service to others. Not so much focusing on yourself. And and Jesus said that over and over again. You know, he's like, true religion is helping the orphans, the children, the people that can't take care of themselves. You know, and what, what he was saying is, it, it's that. It's not the going to church and giving money to the church. That's easy. Mm-hmm. I could mm-hmm. show up at a building, listen to some cold music, listen to a motivational speech, and then throw some money in the plate. Yeah. And then go but home actually, and kick the dog. Yeah, and then go home and kick the dog. My kids don't like me, you know, and, you know, and just be an asshole at work or yeah. whatever. But to actually look and say, hey, as a leader, you know, like of a family or, or work or whatever, but for me as a leader, it's like how can I love this person right now in the mistake that they perceive that they've made? Mm-hmm. How can we walk through this together and they be better at the end? And that's amends, you know. It's like, but it, but it, it works on me. Yes, that's the crazy part. It's healing, it's so for, cool for all parties. It's healing. Um, one of the things that we like that you like is um, you cannot uh, think your way into better living. You have to live your mm-hmm. way into yes. better thinking. Mm-hmm. 
So this starts mm-hmm. with my action. I have to be willing to show up and be and behave differently. Mm-hmm. When I'm with her, and with, when I'm in my relationship or with my partner, and I want to behave selfishly, I want to behave judgmentally. It's that counter and it's that counter action that saves my ass. And I'm so grateful that that we have each other, bro. That we have that we have leaders that we have that we have guidance people that we can turn to to help bounce these ideas off of because that helps keep me in check it's like, oh, yeah that was selfish yeah, yeah. you shouldn't have said that <laughs> yeah 100%, yeah that was cruel yeah. you shouldn't have said that yeah and then i get a chance to go make it right well you know and, and most people never have truly experienced real love sure and 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 it's i don't i need to show that to others because that's the if that's the most powerful thing i can show someone you know, then think about that. Mm-hmm. Like that's the most powerful thing I can show somebody. The biggest gift that I can give to somebody is me loving them. So, absolutely, that's my number one goal. Yeah, because that's the only power I have that is ultimate. You know, I mean, I can give them judgment, this but is, they get that all the time. They they're doing it to themselves constantly. Twenty four seven. They have yeah, sixty thousand yeah. thoughts of negativity. Mm-hmm. Do they need my thought? <laughs> let, me, let me compound your suffering here. Yeah. This is, again, one of the biggest paradoxes of all of recovery. The best thing I have to give someone is my love and mm-hmm. my presence. Yes. Simultaneously, if I can do that, if I can genuinely give them my love, give them my presence, Yes. what do I start to receive? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, this I, is the cool part. I, the universe starts, mm-hmm. so the universe doesn't give you what you want. The universe gives you what you are. Mm-hmm. So if I'm vibrating at the level of love and service, that's just what I am in that moment. The universe starts giving me love, starts yeah, giving me service. One one thing that's been helping me here, especially a lot lately, is old Jason's cruel. Yes. New Jason, because you just talked about this, is be kind. Mm-hmm. Like, be kind. Be kind. S- shut the fuck up, motherfucker. Just be <laughs> kind. It's stupid what you're thinking. Don't just be, that. yeah, just yeah. be kind. Like, be kind. Yes. Like, oh, how yeah. how easy is it to be kind? I mean, you were sharing a story with me. It's personal, so I won't go into details. But you had like moments of where with a family member, you just had to be kind through the whole process. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I, I want to be selfish now. Instead, I'm going to be kind. And then you were kind through the whole process. And you don't even realize the ripple effects of healing that that's, that causes. You know what I mean? You don't realize it. No. But not just towards, I mean, just to have awareness enough to recognize that. You know, a lot of people are just cruel all the time. Sure. We we like to say that being cruel is a strategy. It's just a losing strategy. Or selfish. I think cruelty is selfish. Absolutely. Is all it yeah, is. you can change it to the, the, so my selfish behavior in reality will push the people that I want close to me away. Yeah, and I, and I want to close in this because I think this is really important. I want you to talk about this. The process of self-discovery and making amends is not a one-time event, but a lifelong journey. And this is the cool part, and this is what I love about this process, is the more you do this, the easier it is to do it. Do you know how, how when I'm really being honest and loving, how easy it is to say, hey, I fucked up. Here's what I need to do. Here's some changing. Let's let's move in this direction. I've done that several times with my girlfriend, and it's really easy. Mm-hmm. We have a great conversation about it. And and she's pretty quick to forgive because she's on a spiritual path too, and I am too. But I don't. I'm not afraid to have that conversation. So powerful. Where before five years ago, I I would have been dishonest. Well, I would have ended the relationship, yeah, so we didn't yeah. have to have the talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> don't call me to responsibility. Yeah, fuck off. There's plenty. There's um, nine billion people out there. I'm I just out. Go have another one. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, lifelong journey piece. You know, uh, in reality, the majority of our men's. Uh, are living amends. Th- mm-hmm. That means, okay, well, I have to commit to this way of life now. Yes. And I have to commit to this changed behavior now. And that means I have to live this way. Yeah, I commit to a life of compassion. Yes. Or I, could, I commit to a, a life of not causing you harm. Because my whole idea is to transform others. And this is high level shit. But ultimately, like you have, like you told you told me, like your family calls on you to pray now. Yeah. So they in fourteen years they've looked at now they look at you as a spiritual being. Yes. That that and when there's hard conversations to have in your family, they want you involved, and you usually lead them. Yeah. So, isn't that wild? Like that addict doing fourteen years ago, if 
fight or flight that they're feeling fucking up Christmases. Now you've come to the point to where you've alchemized it to where they look to you as the leader. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't I mean, 14, it's like 14 Christmases later, I'm asked to lead the prayer. And you had a situation with the family member where there was some confrontation uh, here recently. And you were able to go to that person, have a conversation with them in love. And both of you fixed it easy mm-hmm. within the same day, within the same afternoon or whatever. You know, I don't want to get into the situation, but it's it's like, it's like, that's so people don't do that. Somebody gets mad at an aunt, an uncle, uh, 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 you know, a mom or dad or grandma. They can go years without talking to them ever. They'll just scoot them out of their life. Yep. This happens all the time. There are people listening to us right now that are doing that. It's easy. You were to like, end. no, I need to have a conversation. Let's amend this. Let's have a, let's talk. And then everything you did this just a couple of weeks ago when, when, or a month ago or whatever. Yeah. When, when God is in the middle of it, it has a high probability of going well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if my selfishness yes. is in the middle of it, I'll run or I'll, I'll fight. Yeah, and if it's too early and the person's still not ready to forgive, know that you need to forgive yourself and just live a life of love and let them see that over time. Very good. Our actions will show them more than our words. Maybe six months and in another six months, go to them. Yeah. I remember they when may I, be hurt for a while. When I made my amends to my mother, um, you know, I went down the list and I got to the part where I did I leave anything out? This is me making a commitment not to live this way. Alive. She said, I don't forgive you. And it, I believe that it was uh, my higher self that spoke because I didn't have this education when it mm-hmm. came out of me. I said, that's okay. I'm not asking you mm, to forgive so me. I'm just letting you know I won't be that type of man again. Yes, yes. And then my behavior had to f- prove my words. I had to put my money where my mouth was. I had to start <laughs> living that way. And then she's and, totally and, healed. And, yeah. and I love my mom, and, and we have a great relationship today. Yeah, I, I just the other day she called you on the phone. Yeah. She was talking yeah, about she something. called to check in. But this is crazy, and I, I, I want to close in this, and, and us be done, and maybe you could talk about this, Wayne. But the healing comes from having a deep connection to the world around us, not making it me narcissistic with the blind eye. You see, the blind eye is me stumbling around, totally in my addiction, not looking at the world around us. The healing comes like, oh shit, here's here's a whole C.S. Lewis, you know, who wrote oh, yeah. Witch Lion or He he talked about something and it's always stuck in my head. I remember this as a teenager, him saying this. And when it, he had old radio programs in World War II and he always talked, you know, because he was in England at the time and stuff, and they were getting bombed. And he said, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. They're living in a sandbox playing in the sand when they actually have keys to a mansion that's up the hill. It's just a lot of people choose to be in their ignorance and play in the sandbox and make life comfortable here instead of realizing what they have. Yeah, yeah. That they that everybody has that castle. Everybody has that mansion that's available to them. One of my favorite mantras that I teach all my clients is I'm connected to infinite abundance, Mm. not because of my bank account, but because I'm connected to the present moment. And I'll say over and over, I'm connected to infinite abundance, not because of my bank account, but because I'm connected to the present moment. Once we start living this way of life, this healing, this love, this this, uh, 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 God consciousness vibration, Mm. that abundance is all around me. Yes, I love that. Eckhart Tolle is like, the man on this, like the power of now. Where does God live? Now. Where does all power generate from? Now. When can I experience it? <laughs> now. now. How do I tap? Yeah. When do I tap into it? Now. The abundance is all around me. It's my job to just tap into it. And sometimes it's very helpful to start very simply, mm-hmm. like stupid simply. Like, did you know I have an abundance of coffee? <laughs> did you know i have an abundance I love it. Yes. of access to cell phone service did you know i have abundance of blue sky i always do that with being well not always but i try to be grateful for hot water showers fantastic because they're so amazing did you know they I have, wake you up i have an yeah. abundance of hot water showers yeah yeah we have yeah. Wat, cool watches infinite on. infinite hot water uh, like cool shirts on yes so that idea puts me in the vibration mm. of abundance god don't really care the topic 
I'm just existing at a vibration of abundance and more starts coming to me. My life starts getting really big. Did you know I have an infinite abundance of access to gyms that I could go to and work out? Did you know I could go to any gym I want? I have an infinite abundance access to forgiveness. Powerful. powerful. I have an infinite abundance access to love. If that's how I approach someone that I had just had had an altercation with, did you know I have an infinite (laughs) access to forgiveness? Conversation is probably going to go well. It won't turn into a fight. It turns into this transmutation. It turns into this changed behavior. It turns into this good for you, good for me. We're both expanding. Yeah, it's so awesome. That's so good. Well, and in that, I I want people to understand um, we have a YouTube channel with the videos, not just uh, we have Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We're pretty much on like just about everything. We're on like 14 different platforms. So um, share this with your friend. We ask one thing. Um, to share this with your friends and family. Uh, we talk to people all the time that have an addiction or have a friend or a family member that's, you just talked to somebody the other day that's had two family members in addiction or three, you know, one died and two, it was on the podcast. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Her parents are both alcoholics and her sister died from alcoholism. Yeah. And we'll get that link when we get it from you and, and we'll put that out there so everybody can watch that. But think about that. It's like, you know, somebody or have somebody that you may be able to change their life because yes, it's not Dwayne and I doing the teachings or anything like that. That's powerful. It's the spiritual principles that are coming out. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, Jesus talked about like nothing goes void from a spiritual principle. So you sending this to somebody is not going to go void. They may look at it, listen to three minutes of it and delete it and have nothing, but something went inside. Yeah. A seed. Yeah. Because we're we're not talking to the addicted person because that's not the real person. Mm -hmm. We're we're not talking to you. Yeah, you're in your addiction, but that's not the real you. The real you is that higher self that's higher in you self. that's perfect, and that's who we're communicating with. Yeah, that's so powerful. And the higher self is capable of receiving that seed it's always. of transfer. It has the infinite abundance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, that's just there. And then, God willing, if a window of grace appears and I'm ready to start taking some counterintuitive action, that seed starts to grow 